Well, it's Friday evening and it's 8 p.m., so this must be Byline, a public affairs show uh, co-sponsored by Amherst Media and the Amherst League of Women Voters. And uh, this show is uh, in its very early uh, stages of development, but we've had a number of guests already, and uh, our purpose is to help you get to know better those people who are newly representing you as legislators, at both in our town council and on Beacon Hill. And, uh, both Mindy and Joe will join us uh, as we move along uh, further down the road. Uh, but right now we've been counseling, uh, focusing on the town council. And tonight we have a treat because we have two counselors here. And this is the first time we've had two guests on the show at the same time. And you are the two district counselors for District 3. Great. And uh, you both have very interesting backgrounds. And so first I, I just want to give you each a chance to talk for a couple of minutes about your background, where you came from, and, and uh, the kinds of things that you've done that have prepared you and given you skills and perspective and experience uh, that uh, are uh, part of your uh, background and portfolio as you sit and serve on the town council. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that I found so interesting was that you both are actually teaching at Holyoke Community That's College. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. uh, but t tell, me, tell me, George, more about yourself. Well, um, I've been a resident of Amherst for over 30 years and uh, raised both our daughters here. Um, done a lot of the things that a uh, typical parent does uh, in Amherst and sports and that sort of thing as a coach. Um, but uh, my, uh, I've served on town meeting for 12 years. And uh, before that, for 12 years, I was uh, on the board of Habitat for Humanity. And so my engagement in the community has been largely with, uh, well, basically it's called NGOs. I mean, basically non-governmental. It's, uh, you know, working with Habitat on the board, uh, addressing the issue of affordable housing. And uh, I served as vice president, eventually as president. I was mentored by the very lovely George Goodwin. Um, and uh, it was something I really, really enjoyed. Um, working to a, I mean, it was a product that you, you created. In the end, there it was, it was a house. Um, we were basically running a not-for-profit, uh, at the beginning, all-volunteer construction company. So uh, it called on me to work with people from a vast number of different backgrounds and experiences and get them to work together uh, to this final goal of creating a home and uh, getting, someone to, getting a family to live in it. So um, I found that deeply rewarding. And I'm hoping that that experience will um, help me on the council uh, in the sense that uh, it was a job where I wasn't the one who knew how to build a house or, or do the, the, uh, uh, the legal uh, requirements. Uh, I didn't do the work of the lawyers. I didn't do the work of the construction people. But my task was to get all these people to work together um, and uh, to uh, keep everyone on the same, uh, same page. Um, and it uh, opened my eyes to all the many wonderful things that are done in our community. So uh, I enjoyed it in large part uh, because it uh, exposed me to so many uh, different people, so many different experiences, um, all aimed towards a common good, a common goal. And I kind of see town council that way. Um, the, the common goal is to continue to make Amherst the kind of, of town that, that we want and, and hope for. Um, and so collaboration, listening, um, that's the skills that I hope I can bring to the council. Right. Well, that's terrific. And uh, I also understand that you help out with uh, community breakfast and some other things. I've tried to, yeah, I do try to, uh, I find that, that hands-on experience is really what, um, well, first of all, you, you're doing something that actually you see the product right there. So you, in, in we have the community breakfast uh, at the Unitarian Church every Wednesday morning, and I've started to volunteer there. Uh, I also do uh, Meals on Wheels, and where I engage with the senior community, and uh, I just find that very satisfying, and it also grounds me. Um, you know, town council, people think, wow, what a big position this is, and it is in a way, it, um, but this is, an, I enjoy that kind of hands-on, direct experience uh, uh, volunteering, so yeah, I and, do those and things. And I, as I recall, uh, 
again, both you and Dorothy have a similar experience in town of having been part of town meeting for a period? That's right, yes. I served for 12 years on town meeting. Very good. And how long were you on, Dorothy? Oh, just the last town meeting. Last town meeting. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was really taken in the opening statements uh, when the uh, council was first uh, convening uh, in its very first meeting uh, when you made your opening statement that you, you talked about um, uh, your ancestry, and I found that really yeah. fascinating. Um, tell us a little bit about where, where you came from and, uh, and uh, your, also about your civic engagement. Well, <clears throat> my mother was the family uh, genealogist, and New England has uh, had a very big role in our family history. Um, ancestors came over from uh, England and Scotland in the um, mid-17th century and came to Massachusetts. And um, the Smith, that's my maiden name, Smith, um, Smiths went up to Wiscasset, Maine, and actually when I was a young girl, I was able to still see some of the descendants of those Smiths that went up to Maine a long time ago. Wow. But um, my ancestors were immigrants, and they came because um, there was a, King Charles was being despotic, and the parliament had been uh, ended. And they came here, and they set up town meetings and representative and direct democracy, which was very important to all of them. And they came because they were escaping um, economic bad conditions and they wanted more freedom and bad harvests and a variety of things. And actually the same things that my husband's family came for when they came from uh, Eastern Europe um, in the early 20th century. So um, we have a lot to look forward to and to look back to. I mean, I think New England's heritage is very important. And I think that we're playing a very special role right now in that we are more, I would say, forward thinking. We're paying attention to climate change. Um, we are very concerned with the quality of life. And um, here in Massachusetts, very concerned about the quality of public education so that uh, our students are some of the best or maybe the best in the country. Yeah. So I'm very happy to be back to New England um, after many years in New York City. Great. And uh, while uh, you are relatively new to politics here in the Valley, you yeah. have a long history over time of both civic engagement and political engagement yeah. uh, where in different places where you've lived. What kinds yes. of things other than town meeting uh, are informing the way you think and, uh, and the way you engage? Well, it was kind of like just walking around as a young mother. Um, a fire erupted in the street and that was tied to <clears throat> a proposed jet fuel pipeline that was going to come straight in front of our elementary school. So although I was uh, either pushing a stroller or carrying a baby in a backpack, I got involved in community politics. And um, I ended up being elected district leader twice, Democratic State Committee woman twice, um, delegate to the Democratic Convention. And we worked on many things, including <clears throat> making our community a planned community preservation district to protect it from having all of the green spaces turned into little private parking lots. And uh, we go back to that community, Sunnyside Gardens in Queens, every year, and it is now a historic district. Mm. Um, so I'm very interested in communities and the quality of residential neighborhoods and the role that individuals can play in keeping them strong. So it sounds like planning and yes. development yes. and visioning and long-term, taking the long view are all things that you're... Uh, you're in the moment, and you're looking yes. for opportunities in the moment, but you're also looking down the road yes. long-term about what the imp impact is going to be of the decisions that are made today. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we in the town council, we have, there is no town meeting anymore. So we have a, a dual role. We do represent the people, as the town meeting did, but we're also the legislators. So it's, um, it's a heavy responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. But... We're all busy learning on how to do it right yeah. now. Well, you're pioneers. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> in the long history of this community, we've never had this structure yeah. and uh, a council of 13 people who hold a legislative uh, office and who are responsible for providing leadership and navigating the yeah. town. We've gone from open town meeting to representative town meeting yeah. now to yeah. uh, 13 select people in the community who are chosen to be our leaders. And so, and that's part of the reason for this show is that we know that uh, as people were uh, coming out of the charter vote and moving toward electing a council, probably all of us were paying attention to all of the at-large candidates because mm -hmm. we were all going to 
be represented by them. Mm -hmm. But uh, we focused probably most of us focused at the district level only on those who are from our own district. So uh, thank you for giving some introduction to the viewers for uh, of your backgrounds mm -hmm. and who you are, where you came from. So we're now in the next phase of the work of the council. Some of the committees have now been set up and both of you are on standing committees. And one of the purposes of the show is to help people understand the new structure and what these various boards and bodies are going to do within the council. So I'd like to shift the focus in that mm -hmm. direction now. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, George, let's talk about one of the standing committees that you're serving on. Uh, another of our guests uh, previously is on the same committee and uh, explain the appointments. The appointment side, right, and, right. And that area right. of the communications outreach and right. appointments. Right. So could you focus a little bit and help the people in town understand what does it mean, what is the communications and the outreach, outreach side of that committee. Of yeah. that committee. Yeah. Um, well, one of the mandates of the charter is that there be um, district uh, meetings and townwide forums. Um, the district meetings were required a minimum of two each, for each district. Dorothy and I were already uh, talking about our first. So there are these districts. Are you going to do them jointly? Yes, that's, we are. That's do the district exactly. councillors yes. have to do them jointly? I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I, so that's a great sign well, yeah. that you're going to do them together. No, yes. I think, yeah. yeah. No, Bravo. Absolutely. Yeah. Bravo. Uh, and I think that may be the model. Others will follow. We, we're not sure yet, but okay. um, that's right away we felt this was the that's way great. to go. Um, and so you have district meetings, there'll be at least two, uh, we perhaps will have more than two because in our district right. we have a large student population and uh, one of the things Dorothy and I agreed on is trying to reach out to the students and um, in this recent election we had the highest percentage of student engagement. Um, we had a candidate who was a student. So um, that's something that uh, we might make a third uh, uh, district meeting. So the district right. meetings and they need to be organized and uh, coordinated. Um, and then there are townwide forums. Um, my understanding is one on the budget and one on schools. Yes, um, that's And so that's those are townwide. So we need to, that's a part of the uh, outreach uh, aspect. Um, and are you, as members of that committee, responsible for making sure all of those forums occur? Do yes. you have to help organize them yes. or just yes. ensure We're, that they happen? I think we, it, it's, uh, part of that is, I think, going to be decided decide over, over the next uh, few weeks, but I, I'm so pretty clear. it could clear. be oversight, but it could also be Well, certainly, or, yes, definitely organization, making sure they happen, Good. and coordinating. I think the biggest thing is coordinating. You have 13 individuals, um, and whether they meet in, in right. pairs or whether they meet individually, and then the townwide forum. So that is, and the idea of engaging uh, the community uh, the communication side. Um, part of what we're doing with you is is that, um, and so we'll be thinking about ways to um, better better further that. We have the uh, is, is the uh, community. What is the community participation officer? I get these titles yes. right. Um, and officers. It, officers. It yes. turns out you know, we're going to actually have three it's people. Shared it's right, yes. and they're already town employees, so it won't involve expenditure, um, and they all bring uh, a lot of experience. Um, uh, one of them speaks Spanish, uh, all of them have kids in the schools, they're engaged in this. So they, uh, the hope is that they will broaden a great deal um, the, the pool. Um, so the other part of, of outreach and communication, but particularly outreach, is, is working with the community participation officers. I worked with those two people, among others, yeah. on the inaugural planning committee. Yes, they're very calm. And boy, what a highly yeah. yes. talented Very talented, very skilled, are, and very engaged. Yeah. So uh, you're, That's the hope, you're yeah. lucky to have yes, uh, those, we are. those we are. people. And by the way, in general, the town staff is yeah. yes. just really, really yes, strong. That is, yes. So um, let's uh, shift uh, to finance. Mm -hmm. um, and this will be the, you're the first member of the finance committee uh, on uh, our show. So uh, talk about how you see the function of the finance committee. Well, first of all, we have a very fine civil service of people who are professionals who work for the town. And we have a town manager who is doing an excellent job. So that they, there's all kinds of work that has already been started in preparing the budget. Uh, which is going to be one of our major items yeah. this spring. Um, so what is our job on the Finance Committee? Um, well, as I say, we do represent the people of the town. So we're to look at the budget and to think about the impact on people, on neighborhoods, on our overall financial um, ability to carry out these projects and do them well. And there's decisions that have to be made. There will be, 
we have to prioritize, and we have to think about um, how to efficiently spend the money to make sure that we get what we need. Maybe that's not all that we want, but we definitely have to get what we need. Um, it's kind of like having a house full of teenagers, all of whom have to go to college at once. I mean, we have these major capital projects, right. which um, there's strong reasons that we have to do them. Um, schools, public works, fire, library. And it's going to be a very challenging project. Um, so I look forward to working with the committee. We have our meetings getting started this next week. And we will be working very closely with the town government and the town manager on looking at the budget, examining it, and uh, bringing it to the council for I, uh, the vote. I think that's in May. Um, so as a member of the committee, mm -hmm. um, uh, you are the last stop before the council vote. Is that correct? That's right. So the this journey begins with the town manager and the town the, the department Dep heads yes. putting together right. and agreeing on a budget and submitting that budget to um, directly to the finance committee. It goes to the finance committee. Um, one of the areas that um, is kind of confusing at this time is that when we get the budget formally, the council cannot add or increase any allotments. So the, the input that we as council members have. And that's because have, of uh, provision in the charter? I believe so, okay. yes. Okay. So you can only reduce, you cannot increase. That's right. Can okay. you, uh, and so that means you can't create a new program at the council level or increase the amount that's been uh, being mm -hmm. appropriated for something that hasn't come to the finance committee from the town manager. Mm -hmm. So we need to, in the finance committee, uh, working with the rest of the council, um, have our input to the budget before we've reached that state. Mm -hmm. So now that's kind of where how it is different from, from town yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. very yeah. different. Yes. And, uh, but there are also a couple of other panels that intersect. Yes. And I'm not going to remember the names of them, <laughs> and I'm not going to put you on the spot. Thank you. But <laughs> have you thought about how these four different panels are going to interact and what you will expect as a finance committee member mm -hmm. in terms of how, how this work is going to go on. Um, well, the committees um, have finance members on them, yes. okay. as well as other representatives of the town. Uh -huh. So that's how they will interact. Okay. And so uh, the town council will have a voice in each, each of those That's right. panels, yes. 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 and so the product of each of those panels will include the voice of the council, yes. and then when it gets to the council, the, I'm sorry, are they all finance committee members who are on these No, there panels? are some council members who are not finance right. committee members and who some will also who are. be, right. yes, right. and okay. it's all spelled out in the charter. Okay, so there's going to be sufficient overlap yes. in this alphabet soup <laughs> of Yes. panels, mm -hmm. that there's going to be a lot of organic uh, give and take That's right. throughout the process so that by the time the budget gets out of the finance committee, a lot, m probably the majority of the councillors will have had a voice in That's getting right. it to mm -hmm. that point, just simply because of the number of panels, the number of councillors right. who are spread mm -hmm. on those panels. Okay, that's very interesting. George? Well, one of the community forums, so back to the idea of participation and town involvement, also one of the community forums is devoted to the budget, so also the voters will have a say. They will be welcome to come to an, this forum mm -hmm. and uh, make their contributions, so they also will have a voice in the so creation of... plenty of opportunities yes, yes. There are many to opportunities. speak up, so there, there should be few surprises. We hope, that's, that's our hope, yes. and we are... Uh, yes. But also, if... Uh, if a councillor is asleep at the switch here, mm. they're not, they and their district and their seat is not going to have the full impact in the process because yes. you can't add, you can That's only right. subtract That's right. That's when right. it gets to the, That's a big difference. To yes. the uh, town yeah. council. Yes. So that's a very robust, engaging process for the public, yeah. for the town councillors mm. and a bunch of folks yes. who have been selected to sit on these panels from the public yes. and from the town staffs. So it's going to be a very, very robust 
and, and open and transparent process, yes. which I, I take note in, in looking at the charter, mm -hmm. how much emphasis uh, transparency and civic engagement is embedded in there. Mm -hmm. Values that are very significant to the community over a long period of yes. time. Yes. And a lot of people who feared a charter, mm -hmm. a charter change and a change in the town government, right. worried yes, that they people do. would lose their voice yes. and their mm -hmm. access. But the mechanisms that have been built in and the way the town council has begun and the way the town administration has begun right. show that oh. the adherence to these basic values that have been in town forever mm -hmm. are inf reflected in the charter yes. and they're actually being used yes. and actualized as you move forward. Yes. Yes. So are you you're both feeling comfortable with how that's unfolding? I think it's early to say. Uh, yeah. I think the spirit is there. You've the described it very good. well, Stan. Okay. Um, and the commitment is there, I think, from the council. Okay. But there's many, many moving parts. Right. That, so there's and, a lot of distance to go before yes, you know I think, how right. well it's going and to be. I think the voters will tell us. Well, and we, we also have some extremely well-informed people in town. Yeah. We have people who yes. have been very concerned and involved, participating at all levels of this uh, community government, who contact us give us their yeah. opinions, give yes. us their yeah. thoughts. Um, so it's like we are not here inventing the wheel all by ourselves. Yeah, that's, right. Um, that's right. We're part of a, a very informed yeah. community. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And everything that I've seen so far in the meetings, because uh, I've been watching the meetings online, and um, everything that I've heard and seen so far uh, suggests that everyone on the council is taking seriously oh, their yeah. responsibility mm -hmm. as a leader, but they're also um, following the spirit of what the town voted for yes. and um, people feared that there would be a lot of division and um, it feels like it's coming together yeah. one step at a time, yes. one meeting at a time yes. and heading in the right direction. So um, let's see, there's a, another committee uh, that you're on governance and legislation. Yeah, what is governance and that's legislation? That's a good question, Stan. Yeah, <laughs> these are all good questions yes, as we're uh, trying right. to piece and I, this that together. That committee will also be meeting for the first time on Monday. Um, I think more of a technical committee, more concerned, not with setting policy or um, anything like that, but simply making sure that, uh, for instance, a bylaw that's being presented to the council is in the right form, that has been vetted by the town attorney, um, and also the internal rules of the council um, making sure that they, you know, over overseeing that. We have an ad hoc committee right now who's creating the uh, rules, yes. but eventually that will come to this committee and then it will come to the council, is my understanding. So it's more of a technical um, committee, um, dotting I's and crossing T's, um, not designed to create policy or make advice in that sense at all, but mm -hmm. simply making sure that things are in the right form. Okay, uh, and uh, the legislation refers to local legislation, yes, yes, yes. as it's opposed to internal. setting an agenda that, for our state legislators. Although correct. there will be interaction yes. with state legislators yes. as you bring home rule petitions forward right. and as you need no. guidance. This committee definitely is not. In, that's it's not. It's in, it's in mandate. Direction. No. Yeah. Great. Now, uh, you've got a, um, uh, a forum coming up, a retreat. February 2nd, I think, is the date. Yes. What's the intention of that, uh, of that event? Well, one of the things, we, first of all, it's, we're still working on team building. Uh, and I think we've been doing very well on that. Yeah. Uh, but one of the items that we're going to be talking about is the committee that we call the committee that has no, no name. name. <laughs> ah, excellent. So, um, and I'm very interested in that committee. I've, and, I've um, observed that. You, you've been very active in that debate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it, it deals with um, planning, the master plan, economic development, right. um, communities, neighborhoods, um, quality of life. It's, it's kind of where we see what are the impacts of these various things that are happening, what is the overview. Um, so it's, it's kind of tricky pinning it down. Uh, we've been working on it, and I, hopefully after the retreat we will all come out. With a clear uh, sense of, maybe absolutely. with a name, we'll have a name. Because it's a very, it's a, it's a very important committee. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, Everyone wants to be on it, is my impression, which is another issue. But <laughs> Yes, yes. A committee of the whole. Well, that may be a possibility, I don't know, but yes. Uh, uh, right now we need a name. We need a name. <laughs> well, let's see, form follows function, yes. and names follow the right. function as that's well. Right. So, exactly. so. Um, well, uh, that's, that's going to be a very exciting uh, yeah. committee, because that's, that's part of the nature yeah. of, of yeah. Amherst and mm -hmm. the um, 
for those of us who've lived in town a long time, mm -hmm. who have been concerned about how narrow the tax base is, yes. the decisions that are made around uh, planning and economic development are, are really crucial. critical. They are critical. And yes. uh, not only because it can create additional revenue, but also because it speaks to the values of the town, the yes. types of yes. uh, enterprises that uh, that occur in town, yes. and uh, it's been it's been really difficult to get uh, economic development things uh, launched in the community, yes. and the community is also still um, quite uh, divided and up in the air on the question of where housing is being placed and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. style of the housing. That's right. Yeah. Um, but then um, I'm really excited that people are not talking about economic development and planning and housing and all of that in isolation from sustainability. Mm -hmm. That's right. It is That's so right. Right. incredibly important to the values of the community and the fact that we stepped out on net zero building, right. which was a tough decision right. uh, at town meeting and select board because it obviously costs more initially, but on a life cycle basis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can end up saving money and you're also helping the environment. But right. to make that leap is a very, very big leap. And so there are a lot of leaps ahead of us yes. right. as you talk about trying to balance sustainability with our economic and housing development needs in, in town. Well, what a, a working title for this committee could be Community and Economic Development and Sustainability. Because all of our decisions from now on will be including uh, the sense of how do we stay as a community and how do we be a sustainable community. Right. I think that's one of our, the special missions of New England at this time. Um, oh in terms of our becoming independent, in terms of, of power and food, um, intellectually we're fine. Uh, so right. we should, we're all working on this. Well, uh, it's very exciting. And uh, believe it or not, our time is up. And wow. I want to thank you, George Ryan well, and thank Dorothy you, Pam, our yeah. District 3 counselors, for uh, joining us today to introduce yourselves to the whole community. And we hope that uh, you've enjoyed tonight's show and that you'll join us again. If you'd like to see this show again, you can see it uh, Monday at 6 p.m. And uh, in between now and Monday, you can see it uh, on YouTube, Amherst Media YouTube and Amherst Media Online. And thank you to the League of Women Voters and Amherst Media for making this show uh, possible uh, to help uh, us all understand more about our newly elected legislators. Thank you and good night.